What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm your host, Brad, joined by my co-hosts, Micah. Hello. And Carrie. What's up? Uh, what is up is that Elden Ring 12 Hours In might be one of the most fascinating games that I've played in my entire life. That's what's up. You're not going to get me to buy this thing, man. No, I, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to tell you my experience with the game, and independent of that, whether you buy it or not, is your prerogative, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> but here, so let me let me preamble this by saying, first of all, many of you listening out there are going to hear much of what I'm going to say and say, oh, he's just describing the experience of playing a From game for the first time. And you're partially correct, because this is the first From Software game that I've really played. So, like, I'm getting that full experience. Um, but also, Elden Ring, the game, um, is a fascinating open-world experience. So, I'm, I'm 12 hours in to this game. And I've had three very distinct phases that I've gone through with the game so far. So the first phase is just this first four hours where you get put into this world that is designed very specifically to be like a spectacle. Like it's huge. It's very pretty, which is not something that you can typically say about FromSoft games. Like they have a style, but they're not usually like objectively gorgeous. This game is objectively very pretty. And you're just kind of lost in the wonderment of this of this world. Um, much in the same way that people felt when they first played Breath of the Wild. And I promise I'm not going to make that comparison often because it's been super cliche from like everyone that's reviewed this game. But it's the same, it's the same feeling. Like when you look out from the plateau in Breath of the Wild, like you see this huge world and realize you can go anywhere there. And it, and it's kind of the same thing with this. So that's the first four hours, and you're just kind of discovering things. And the it's it's an open world game, but because there's no quest log, and there is literally no quest log in the game. Like like it's not like you talk to a talk to an NPC, and then he tells you, "Oh, go to this place to do this thing that's there, and you'll have a grand adventure." Like that's that's not typically how it goes. Like FromSoft games, from what I understand, are very cryptic in how they deliver quests to you. Um. So, like, it just encourages you to, to fucking wander. Like, 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 the map that you're given is such that it has a rough idea of where things might be in the world. So, like, you have a general sense of where you should be going to discover stuff, but you don't know what's going to be there. Like, you don't know what you're going to find. Like, there were these fucking ghouls that were farming this, uh, this, like, broken down ruin and I was like, ah, they're easy fodder. I'm going to get some runes. And then I killed them. And then it spawned this, like, fucking giant, like, bear ghoul thing that I had no business being near. So I fucking <laughs> booked it right out of dodge. And, like, shit like that just happens all the time. Like, there's there's a there's a fight against a world boss um, that you can access in one of the early areas that you're just kind of wandering along, minding your own business, and you're just like, ah, oh, do do let's go into this area here, and then all of a sudden this fucking boss comes in from nowhere and is just, like, in the world. And, like, shit like that is really fucking cool. Like, and it's, it's funny because, like, games obviously do shit like this all the time. Like, this is nothing new. But for some reason, in the world that they've created, it feels... Like, more organic is the best word that I can say. Like, it feels like, ah, oh, this is just a thing that happens in this world where, you know, a dragon flies in. <laughs> like, as, as, as if from nowhere that I can that I can take on. So, there's a lot of that going on. So then, the next four hours was the frustration. Because the frustration <laughs> of, this game doesn't really tell you what to do. And it doesn't give a fuck about you. Like, it'll let you wander into any area that you want to and get your teeth kicked in. And it's not really going to help you, you know, do anything about overcoming these obstacles that are in your path. Now, what's cool about Elden Ring, as opposed to most FromSoft games, is usually when you are playing a FromSoft game, the game's fairly linear so that when you run up against a boss that you can't beat, you have two options. You can either go farm souls and level up, or you can, as the kids say, get good and, and fucking and, and do something about it. Um, or otherwise, you're just not going to progress in the game. 
Uh, in Elden Ring, it's like, ah, is this, is this challenge getting you down? Well, just go do something else. And then you can come back later when you're a little bit more powerful and maybe, and maybe do something about this guy that's, that's causing you trouble. So the fact that you don't feel stuck in any particular area is nice. Now, that being said, I'm still in the first, like, area of the game. Now, granted, this area is, you know, almost as big as some whole games are, and there's a lot to do. Um, but I, have, I haven't progressed to Stormvale Castle yet, which I know is my next, like, critical path port of call. Um, because I've heard that you want to be, you know, at least very, relatively well leveled before you walk into that place. Because that's, like, the first big, big dungeon that you run mm -hmm. up against. Um, so, but there's plenty to do that I'm kind of keeping around, but it was still difficult because I kept running up against challenges that I just didn't feel ready for because I didn't, I hadn't truly grasped like the game systems. I was still running around just trying to fucking square up against everything with a sword and shield and not realizing that that might not be the best, you know, the best thing to do. I wasn't like, I was, I was allocating stats like willy nilly into my character, so I wasn't really focusing a build in any specific direction, um, and I was just kind of like hitting a wall a little bit, and I was like, "Man, kind of early sucks to hit this wall." Like I'm, I, I was, I felt like I was doing like dumb shit to farm, and again, not because the game was making me, just because I was ignorant to what was going on. Um, but then, the last four hours of my time in Elden Ring, I've been meeting the game where it's at. I've, I've been meet, I've been meeting the game the way using all of the systems that are in the game. So like, like magic, like I can go, I can, <laughs> I can go find magic spells and like, rather than run up on someone with a sword and shield, I can sit at a comfortable distance and fling fireballs at them. Like that's a perfectly uh, valid point of attack that we can do. And instead it of is. And, and, yeah. and it kills me that, that you have people being like, that's not the way the game's supposed to be played. Bitch, then why did they put it in yeah, the game? Yeah, it's in, it's in like... the game. Um, you know, uh, if, if I've got a tough boss that I'm fighting against that I'm just having real trouble, like, just, you know, overcoming, uh, let me call a rando person in to just give me a hand with this difficult boss. And they're going to come down and just help me whack away at this thing and draw some aggro and let me, let me uh, be a little more comfortable in the fight. And so the fight's a little bit more manageable while I raise my skill level up. And I'm also doing the thing where I'm like, okay, I know that my inclination when I play these games, this, you know, these third person melee combat games is to ro is to mash the roll button like a fucking idiot. And that's a great <laughs> way to die very quickly in this game. Like you want to be precise with your rolls. You want to be tactical. You want to conserve stamina and, you know, strike when an opportunity presents itself uh, you want to take big enemies and, and you know, make your way around to their big fat booty and just whack away from the back so that you can, you know, be a little bit more safe from a lot of their frontward attacks. And I'm being a little bit more tactical in how I'm fighting. And so yesterday, within the span of two hours, I overcame like three world bosses in a relatively short amount of time considering, you know, where I'm at in the game. That felt really fucking good. Like, 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 like it's, it's, it's a, it's kind of a, I'm trying to think of other like fights in games. Like, I guess kind of the closest corollary would be like fighting against like the Valkyries and God of War, like these challenge battles that you really have to be precise and, and, and mind what you're doing. Um, and so I'm really having a good time playing Elden Ring right now. Um, it's very liberating Going around in an open world that's not pockmarked by icons <laughs> yeah. that that the game populates for you, and that like as you're as you're going to a destination, like every open world game does this, and it drives me insane. Zelda doesn't, but every other open world game does. Where like you're just you're like I'm going to go to this place, like this is the next place I want to go to, and as you're going down the path. Here's a here's an icon that pops up. Go check this thing out over here. Oh, a golden bird just flew ahead to try to distract me to this other location that has this like little side thing. Uh, and there's an exclamation point. What could this be? And they try to distract you from what you're doing. Eldring's like, no, no, no. We're not going to throw distractions at you. If you want to go to this place, go ahead and go to that place. And maybe your natural curiosity 
will stray you from the beaten path. You'll you'll be going down the road and you'll see you'll see a a, a, a band you know two giants hauling a carriage with some soldiers behind it. You're like, what's going on there? Let me observe from a safe distance. Oh, they're carrying a treasure chest on that carriage. Can I kill all those giants and that and that roving band of soldiers? I probably could, but I do have 3,000 runes on me right now. I don't know if I want to risk losing them right this second. <laughs> and so, like, like, like the decision-making processes that you come across in the game feel more organic. Like, it feels, e even though ultimately the systems are very similar, they feel like they're giving you, the player, more agency in how you're experiencing the world. Instead, instead of just, like, you know, popping up, like, GPS signals you know, on a compass above your screen constantly, like they really let you make your way in the world. Like you can make markers on the map, just like in Zelda in the, in like in, in the world map. So like you can like, Hey, I'll mark this down later and I'll come back and check it out because it looks interesting. But I just found these ruins and I want to see if, you know, I can find a, a dungeon to, to, you know, see if there's any treasure down there. Um, I've been experimenting with more of the games, you know, systems. Like I'm, I'm also the type of game that holds on to powerful items forever like because i'm just like ah you never know if i might need this if i run up against a tough boss well you're fighting a tough boss right now i know but there might be a tougher boss and i feel like that i don't need it to overcome this tough, difficult boss that i play <laughs> well, i'm against. exactly the same yeah way. so um i'm kind of giving into that a little bit more i'm experimenting with some of the different combat systems different weapons things of that nature i don't know like i it just feels i i, I think i've discovered about myself like i've talked on the show have kind of gotten fatigued with open world games in general, and it takes a really special open world game like a Ghost of Tsushima that, you know, has amazing combat and tells a story in a really compelling way to keep me engaged over that time. I think really what it is, I'm just tired of having to deal with, like, 30 icons in, like, a three square mile area. I think that's what I'm tired of. Having to having to put up with, I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling like by walking by this thing that they have highlighted on the map that I'm missing something. And Elden Ring doesn't feel that way. Like it 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 encourages you to discover things for yourself and to poke around, and maybe you'll find something really cool. Maybe you'll find nothing. Actually, a lot of times you're gonna find nothing. Like a lot of times, like you're like, oh, where's this cliff wall lead? Oh, literally nowhere. Cool. That's that's fine. I'm glad I stumbled over here and foraged some berries or something so I can feed my horse later. Um, it's cool that they give you an easy out of combat because you have this horse that can really fucking gallop away super fast. So if you find yourself in an overwhelming situation, uh, it's very easy to just get the hell out of Dodge, which is super nice. Um, horse also can double jump, which your character can't do. So you can use him to help get around some That's of the how horses work. It's a spectral steed carry actually. Oh, so okay. he, so, he so, so he's a special okay. horse. Uh, that's like a ghost horse that can uh, that can mm. do all sorts of ghost things, um, and that's also nice because sometimes when you're fighting tough world bosses, it gets you in an area that you can just uh, stand somewhere and cheese the shit out of them. So that's that's always fun uh, to have kind of a safety valve that you can rely on. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've I'm shocked at how fascinated I am by this game to the point where I'm definitely going to continue playing it, and I might even check out some of the FromSoft back catalog when I'm done. Like, I mean, I own Bloodborne. Demon's Soul seems interesting. Um, so I'm going to see... But I but I almost wonder if I'm going to feel let down by those games because it's not going to have this other aspect mm. that Elden Ring has. Where, again, I'm 12 hours in. I'm still technically in the game's first area. I haven't for, fought the first, like, major boss in the game yet. I'm still having a fucking hell of a time. And I think there's, like, so four, four or five areas. Say again? So you don't feel, um, because the story is not, because the game doesn't hold your hand, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not saying games need to hold your hand, but like the way that game design has kind of conditioned us, like you said, everything is, hey, here's your marker, here's this, well, we're, we're looking at 2D maps all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but because the game's story is not, I, I, from what you're saying, this is a game where you make your own fun, and I, I enjoy that to a point. But I mm. also kind of want to be told a story. Well, it's so well, so it's a from game. So again, from what I've understand, so it's like, got to be a little weird and a little yeah. Episode, story, right? story, like like it will tell you a story, but you are going to have to seek it out. Like it's not going to hand deliver it to you in a cutscene. 
<laughs> like it's, it's just not that type of thing. Um, saying that it doesn't really direct you where to go is a slight misnomer. Like it does kind of point you in the general direction as to where the next objective is. It doesn't do a good job of telling you, Hey, you probably don't want to walk into this place quite yet because you're not powerful enough, <laughs> powerful enough to deal with it. Like it's going to rely on you to figure that out for yourself. Um, I will also say I'm not ashamed at all that I'm using not like having my face buried in a guide, but I've referenced like the Fextra life guide that they wrote for Elden Ring a little bit, just to kind of get my senses about me. Like if I feel lost and I was like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I'll I'll consult the guide to kind of get a sense of here's the things you can be doing right now instead of instead of going towards, you know, this castle that feels uh, a little bit scary, <laughs> just in terms of because I know that there's probably going to be some bad shit uh, waiting for me uh, when I get in there. Um, but I haven't been bored. I can tell you that. Like again, twelve yeah. hours roaming around this open area without any real direction on where I should be going. I have not been bored at all. Like it's, it's, it is, it is ultimately the game of, you know, what's over there. And they, and they do a good job of making the world interesting enough that you want to go. Like you'll see something far off in the distance or out of the corner of your eye. And it makes you stop and pause and be like, let me go check this out. And then you see like a giant enemy and you're like, maybe I'll come back later. Like, I don't know if I feel like, de- <laughs> I don't know if I feel like dealing with that. With that right now. I at least I have not been bored at all playing the game so far. The uh the interesting Zelda comparison that I've been seeing from a couple different people is not not so much Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. but actually the original Legend of Zelda. In so much that like that game starts where it's like, Cool, here's a screen. You're in a world. There's a cave over there, and there's like a couple different places you can go to move on to the next screen. Go. And I've I've seen some interesting comparisons where, um, you know, Z- Zelda 1 and a lot of early sort of action adventure and even RPGs like early Dragon Quest and early Final Fantasy, um, they didn't tell you if you were going into an area that was like maybe a little <laughs> a little beyond your current level, of, beyond your current statistics. Um, you just sort of had to figure it out for yourself. And that Elden Ring comes off as... Um, interestingly old school in that sort of way that it's designed. Yeah. I I mean, there, there's definitely been points in that game. So like there was a chest that I opened uh, that was a trap that teleported me to like, Oh, the fog chest. Yeah. I've that, heard about, the, I've heard about the fog. Yeah. Chest. That, that teleported me to like this <laughs> mine, but uh-huh. it's on a completely uncharted part of the map. So I'm like, ah, I probably shouldn't be here. And like the, the enemies in the mine were like two shotting me. So I'm just like, I can't fight these guys. I know that I need to be able to escape because you couldn't like uh, fast travel out of the mine. Like you had to get out of the mine first in order to reactivate your fast travel points. Um, So like I had to basically just like, I just need to figure out how to get out of here. Like I know I'm not going to be able to kill anybody. Um, I just need to sneak around and find the exit and run away. And, And that's exactly what I did. But now in my mind, like that place is because it's a cavern, like it does get called out on your map. Once you discover it, some places do get called out once you find it. Um, yeah. just so you can refer back to it. Um, but now in the back of my head, like, I'm just like, Oh man, when I'm fucking leveled up, I'm going to go back in that mine and kick the <laughs> shit out of all those guys. Like I fucking hate them. Those fucking assholes tricked me and I'm going to beat the fuck out of them when I'm stronger. Like that, like, yeah. that, <laughs> like that's, that, that's how that's going to happen. Um, and that's the thing too, like it's really easy to get around the world um, because all of these like sites of grace, is, which is what the, they're basically the bonfires in this game. Um, you can fast travel between them anytime. And like you can fast travel from, as long as you're not in combat, anywhere you are on the overworld map, um, you can instantly fast travel to a site of grace. So like if you, like if you get a whole bunch of runes and you have a whole bunch of crafting materials and you're like, oh shit, I need to go craft, you know, I'm going to go fucking smith my weapons up so I can get a bit more powerful. Like you can just go back to the place where the smithing stone is like easy. It's not, it's not hard at all. Nice. So, so there are classes like you can. Yes. But all, but all classes do is it determines your starting stats. Like, like it favors certain stats over others at the beginning of the game. And it, and it determines the starting items that you start, that you begin the game with. 
from there though, it's up to you. Like if you start with like a mage class and you're like, this fucking sucks. I want to be, I want to hit people with a big club. Like you can just dump all of your points into strength and vigor and then you can wield a big club. <laughs> like, like, like that's, that's totally fine. It just, it's just, you start the game off uh, with whatever class you choose. And can you respec? Uh, Apparently you can God. later in the game. Yes. God yeah. damn it, Brad. <laughs> Not not for a while though, but not, but but everyone that I talk to that knows what they're talking about has said that your your beginning class doesn't really matter that much. All right, long, one last question. Yeah, the the, uh, the 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 like combat encounters. Yes. Um, is it like uh, I I I understand that the game requires like precision, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's no mashing, but does it feel fair? I don't need it to be easy. But I do need it to be fair, right? It, like it does feel fair. Um, they also added something new in this game that's different from from games. So before, um, basically to open somebody up for a critical strike, you would have to parry them successfully. Like they have a shield block, but they also have a parry. And the parry is obviously a lot more risky, um, but it opens them up for a critical strike. And they still have that in this game as well. Um, but what they also have is they have what are called guard counters, which if you're just doing a regular block with your shield and you block an attack, if you hit your heavy attack right after that, then your character will basically do like a counter attack. That's like a quick strike, um, that deals a lot of damage to the enemy and also sometimes staggers them. So you can follow that up with another, another chain. So even if you're not like a parry God, which I am not <laughs> a very god body stretch of the imagination um it can still help you turn the tide uh in battle a little bit but it still does feel fair like when you get the shit kicked out of you by an enemy it's because like you haven't taken the time to sit back and analyze its attack patterns and understand should i be blocking here should i be dodging here um you know and that sort of thing also like Again, use the tools the game has. Like, when I was just throwing my, my broadsword around, like, I was doing okay, but I was like, man, some of these bigger guys, like, I'm not doing any damage. But then I found it a, uh, they have these things in the game called Ashes of War, and Ashes of War are basically, like, upgrades that you can make to your weapon that give them new skills. And normally they're like physical skills, like one of them like lets you do like an uppercut attack and, and that sort of thing. But I got one that has this attack called Sacred Flame, which literally lets me throw like a sonic boom from my sword at an enemy. But then after I do that, the sword is infused with like holy damage power for like, you know, for like 20 seconds. And while it's got that holy effect on it, I'm basically doing double damage. So like I would like fucking sonic boom an enemy and then, like, you know, rush them down to try to deliver, you know, big combo damage while my sword's on fucking fire so that I can actually do some some hurting to these fucking fools. Hmm. It's, um, been, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> I, I, I have, my, uh, I have my, my, my notepad out here that I do when I calculate all my bills. Oh, yeah? I'm trying to see if I have an... I <laughs> also have... A notepad because they don't give you a quest log in the game, so I'm taking notes <laughs> as the game goes along to remind myself of things that I might need to refer back to later. Because again, it's a from game. Uh, if you don't remember a conversation with an NPC that you had thirty minutes or you know three hours ago that told you to do a specific thing, eh, you're fucking you're not going to remember that thing, and you'll miss that side quest. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I I am also keeping an Elden Ring journal as we go through. Uh, the game as well as uh, as Jason Schreier recommended that you do. Uh, oh, you're playing God the game. damn it! You've you've played from games before though, haven't you? I've played um, Sekiro. And, oh, so uh, you played the worst one? Not 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 <laughs> worst not well, worst like, in time not worst in terms of the game itself, but like the one that demands the most of you. The, the one player. is the most punishing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, that's why I'm like I don't know, but I, you know I hear what you're saying, and it does sound intriguing. It's um, like I said, it's it's just I don't know, and and the world is cool. Like it's got this very like, and again, I swear to God, I'm not trying to sell you on the game, but like it, like it, it's it's a fantasy aesthetic, but it's like different in a lot of ways, but it's different in the ways that like all the from games are different where it's just very kind of gory Gothic horror kind of bullshit that's going on in the game. 
I mean, I'm enjoying, <sighs> I'm enjoying the hell out. I mean, I just fucking talked about it for 25 minutes. So, I mean, it's. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, let's see. Plus. Four. All, right. All, right. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me turn this off. Um, trying to get me to buy, buy a game, Brad. Look, I'm not trying to get you to do anything. If, if, if by, if by my mere, my, my mere exuberance for this fascinating game, uh, has therefore piqued your interest. I, that's through no fault of my own. Uh, it's clearly the fault of Hideki Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin. Well, if you, uh, if you want to buy this game, you should buy it at densepixels.com slash Amazon, uh, where <laughs> you should get all of your, all of your Amazon purchases through densepixels.com slash Amazon. Um, when you go to densepixels.com slash Amazon and you type in Elden Ring, uh, oh, I didn't know it was on Xbox. Um, it is. Yeah, you can get you can get the PS5 the, copy. The only the only one that's not on oh, Xbox, Xbox, I believe, copy. is Demon Souls. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Ah, so yeah, go and, to oh, and, and Bloodborne. And Bloodborne. Oh, that's right. Bloodborne to, is also yes yeah. exclusive. Go to dunspaces.com, uh Buy yourself uh, Elden Ring. Um, and when you type it in, you see a bunch of you see a bunch of games that you can buy: Sifu, Horizon, Dying Light. Uh, all those games are only available through densepixels.com slash Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you can get I, it. I feel like I'm legally obligated to say that that's not true. But... <laughs> well, and, and that's and that's the other but, thing too. Like in, in hearing ta- like in hearing all the things I'm hearing about Horizon and how like the game is laid out, I'm just like. Maybe I'll get to that eventually. Like I feels really, like a game. Right? I'm like really, feels- I'm really not stressed <laughs> to, to rush into Horizon right now. I've, yeah, I've got this. But- I've got this cat, this keep that I need to siege to get it back for the ruler of the land who got deposed by these monsters that were sitting in, <laughs> that were sitting in there. <laughs> that sounds much more exciting. You know, the one oh. with a giant outside that had a enormous bow that he was shooting like fucking five foot long arrows at me from across the map that I had to avoid on horseback. These are things that happen in Elden Ring. It's very cool. <laughs> it's very cool. Have you been playing um, anything new? I I uh I played the first uh chapter of Triangle Strategy. I don't have a lot to say about it right now other than um the English voice acting is uh pretty bad. <laughs> Um, I, think, I think that's a feature, not a bug in those games. Obviously. That tracks for the other games out of that studio. I don't think the voice acting in Octopath Traveler was particularly good either. That, and now that you say it, I'm remembering it. You're 100 percent right. It, it's not. It's not good, man. It's, it's not good. It's serviceable. Fine. It's serviceable. yeah. It's serviceable. It's not, like, it's, it's not. It's it's not nineties anime dub bad. No, right. It's, I would say it is perfectly adequate. It's adequate, but they're t- they're like they're touting that this is going to be like a very serious story, and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna buy it. Like these people are. They're, they seem like they're very nice people and they know how to read well. Um, but they're not like, they're not putting anything in it, man. They're not, they're not really doing uh, it. And you know, I, it just doesn't, if like, and it's the, it's the thing, right? Like if they were English, like if they had English accents, I, I give it more of a pass because you know, my stupid American ear thinks that like the English accent is, is, um, uh you're you're acting right like final fantasy tactics everyone had a fucking english accent like oh they're acting acting no man this is fucking this is us just reading these words (laughs) this this is us just talking reading the words talking about you know like like fighting this bandit yeah it's just (laughs) like uh, i uh uh, i also played the first not chapter but the first battle in triangle strategy and i've determined mm-hmm. that this game is not for me and i will wait for the spiritual sequel uh pentagon dungeon crawler which i'm sure is going to come out <laughs> in like in like three years <laughs> at some point <laughs> i'm going to uh i'm gonna i'm probably gonna pick it up just because uh i really like tactics games and i haven't played one that that has really grabbed me since 
Final Fantasy Tactics. Like I've played Disgaea and all that. And did you play Disgaea Fire Emblem is, Three Houses? I did play Fire Emblem Three Houses. I I don't I don't care for those. I don't care for those kids. I don't, I don't, I don't like them. I don't like those characters. I just don't. Um, I, I Disgaea, all the Disgaeas are too weeby for me. Like, uh, they're, they're That's right. those little... games are super weeby. Yeah, I'm surprised man. you're not just holding out until Advance Wars comes out. I've never played in Advance Wars. So... Yo, the fuck is uh... wrong with you? Advance Wars is really good. <laughs> have you, why, would have you, you played... why would you play Triangle Strategy when we're getting Advance Wars reboot camp in like a month or something? I need something to play for a month. Do they still oh have the God. do they still have the demo <laughs> for Advance Wars? Plus I'm going they... back to work. I'm going back to work and I Ugh. need something to do uh while I'm there. Like full time? Like you're not even doing remote sometimes? Um they're they're easing us back in and um it's gonna be not full time, like two thirds time. Hmm. Whereas before it was like one third time. So yeah. That's oh, the advan- the Advance Wars demo is no longer available. That's unfortunate. Ew. So, uh, if you if Wargroove ever goes on sale, you can play that. That's basically like an Advance Wars game. I okay. mean, Wargroove was made to be like a, a an homage to Advance Wars because everyone thought that that series was dead, and the Nintendo was like, "Ha ha, we're bringing it back." Oh. Um. So speak speaking of Nintendo, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, segue. yeah. I mean, so like they're like, hey, there's it's Pokemon Day or whatever, and we're gonna have something to show off. And people rightfully assume they're just like, ah, clearly this is just going to be the announcement of like DLC for Pokemon RCS. Well, and they're like, and it, it was sort of there was there was a little bit. We had a is, Pokemon <laughs> present. That that is not what this that is not what this trailer <laughs> was for. <laughs> No, I, look, so we had our Pokemon Presents on Sunday, which was Pokemon Day, 26th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise's original debut in Japan. Uh, they talked uh, several um, mobile game updates for Pokemon Cafe Remix and Pokemon Masters EX. Um, the most interesting thing I thought was that Pokemon Go is uh, starting today. Um, we'll be getting... Uh, Pokemon originally seen in the Alola region from Pokemon Sun and Moon. So they are now starting to crop up. Uh, we've had some Alolan forms of uh, other Pokemon, of Kanto Pokemon, such as Alolan uh, Executor, Alolan Meowth, uh, Alolan Grimer, uh, and Muck have been in the game. They, they've been around for a minute. But uh, the like some of the legendaries are cropping up, uh, Rockruff and uh, Picky Peck and the starters are showing up to starting today. So that's cool if you still play Pokemon Go like I do. Um, Arceus did get DLC, sort of. Um, I put the link in wrong, so. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, got a got a free update starting right after the uh, right after the presentation happened. So that's that's pretty cool, and that's free. It's called Daybreak, um, and uh, it's basically version one point one, no extra cost. Uh, the new content uh focuses on what are called massive mass outbreaks, <laughs> where mass <laughs> outbreaks occur like 20 at a time all over the map and you have to investigate why that's happening. Um, I I feel like in the year of our Pikachu 2022 <laughs> um that you might want to avoid using the terminology mass outbreak, mass outbreak. to describe anything in a <laughs> <That's>, video game. <laughs> that's that's what uh those were those were in the game to begin with and they happened at random and basically a mass outbreak in the game is when like an unusually large amount of one particular pokemon show up in one of the different areas and whatnot and that's that's what people have been using to farm shinies Mm -hmm. it's because it's an increased chance for shinies at a mass outbreak so now with a massive mass outbreak there's like a billion of them going on at once and they don't know why um yeah i i played like a little bit of this update um 
like on the plane on my way home from Disney on Sunday. Um, so I, I'm not very far in it. Um, but it's it's an interesting little bit of extra content. Um, you can only play the Daybreak co content if you've reached the credits roll, basically. So it's I would consider it post-game content. So, um, what, so what you're telling me is that when there is a mass outbreak of Pokemon concentrated in a very specific area mm -hmm. that increases your chance of catching a variant of <laughs> one of the Pokemon that is... That is that is uh, that you're trying to find. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. So I mean, that's um, cool. Check out check out the outbreak expansion for for Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So that that was cool. Um, it's nice that it was free. Um, it's nice that you know I I almost sort of hope that they do this sort of thing with Arceus. A lot of people were hoping for a full blown DLC. I was also hoping for a full blown DLC, but it doesn't look like they're going to be doing that. Um, which is fine. Um, new, new content is new content, and it's nice that they're not charging anyone for it, given that it's using exclusively assets that are already present in the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it's basically just new quest lines and whatnot, so that's pretty cool. Um, but the big news, of course, was that we, uh, we now know what the ninth generation of Pokemon is going to be called. We are We'll be getting Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, which will be coming to Switch later this year. It says late 2022 on the Nintendo Switch. Um, it will be taking place in a region um, that is based on Spain. Um, now, that opens up the idea. Now, I'm going to be real with y'all. I took a geography class my freshman year of college, and I got to see, but I'm pretty sure that Spain borders France and the Kalos region, <laughs> the Kalos region is based on France. So it would be interesting if we have the opportunity to revisit part of Kalos in this game. But basically what they did was they revealed the titles of the games and they showed off the three starters, um, the, the grass type cat looking thing named Sprigatito, um, the, Chili Pepper Dinosaur named Fue Coco and the Donald Duck named Quaxley. <laughs> and, um, Do Donald Duck in more ways than one, unfortunately, as some people have uh, pointed out on the internet. Him, it's Donald Duck, and that's fine. <laughs> I, I not 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 the not the only Donald that people have pointed out that he might resemble. Oh no, because he has like a, a cloth. Oh, because he's got that's, the that's, thing. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. disrespectful yeah. to the little duck. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm cool with the little duck. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and here and here I usually go with water type to start the game off. Not uh, not anymore. I for a long time I was really only doing fire or water. Um, I I gotta go with the cat because it's cat looks like weed man like. As far as I'm concerned, that thing's name is Weed Yo, Cat because it's a cat that it. looks like weed. Yo, it looks like a weed. It's got, right? a, it's got a leaf on his face. It's man. got a leaf God on his face. Man. He looks like a fucking weed. Um, so yeah, I'm also partial to cats in general. Here's here's my question: Why, according to this trailer, uh, does Game Freak's uh, studio en encapsulated within a Victorian? Like, I study. genuinely do not know what the <laughs> fuck was going what on. What does in that, that have trailer. to do with Pokemon? I don't know. I I really don't know. Um, and why? And yeah. why is it so poor, poorly secured that a that a rogue security guard can you know make his way down the hallway into the fucking you know glowing Ghostbusters room? I don't know. I don't know what was going on in there. Um, I some people have been like analyzing every frame of that trailer and trying to find clues to other stuff that's going to be in the game. But um, ultimately the biggest news is that um, they are calling this the first true open world Pokemon game. Like it is, it's what people have been clamoring for, for ages. It's what Arceus clearly took the first step into. This is definitely the next step. So I will. Cool. I will say it's the, it's the only it's the only time I think I can ever remember that a new Pokemon game was announced, and the response from the Pokemon fandom was already. Are you, are you really? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, really? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know. Like, 
Sword and Shield came out in 2019, and that was three years after Sun and Moon, which was three years after X and Y, which was three years after Black and White, which was two years after Platinum. So, like... Yeah, but we, but yeah, we got Arceus. Like, but we got Arceus in the meantime. We did get Arceus, and yeah. that's fine. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I'm not that pressed about it. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, sure. You know, Arceus is is actually considered a mainline title for Pokemon. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they retcon that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, Scarlet and Violet are clearly running off of the same engine that Arceus ran on. So um, I'm sure, I'm sure the work for Scarlet and Violet probably started at the same time that it started for Arceus too. Um, keeping in mind that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were outsourced um, to the developer Ilka. So yeah, I mean I I think Scarlet and Violet were probably developed in tandem with Legends Arceus and um you know have continued to go undergo development and will probably be out November, if not early December. So very cool. You've mm -hmm. also been playing a game that I feel like I've heard of tangentially, but I don't know anything yeah. about, which is Aperture Desk Job, which I'm assuming yeah, is... Yeah, you've same. heard about it. Yeah. Yeah, so Aperture Desk Job released today for free um, on Steam and on Steam Deck. It's basically meant to be a tech demo for the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. um, it only takes about a half hour to play. Um, I like Portal, so I was like, oh, cool, <laughs> new Portal content. <laughs> That's fun. Free? Cool. You know, played it over my lunch break today, basically. Um, yeah, it's a funny little game. It'll make you laugh. Um, the new character that they introduced, new little, like, I don't know, new little robot orb friend. He's fun. Um, you get more Cave Johnson content, which is great. Um, there's a surprising amount of Aperture Laboratories lore mm -hmm. in this little half-hour tech demo. But uh, yeah, look, if you want something that's going to make you laugh and will maybe suck up a half hour of your life at most, um, feel free to pick up Aperture Desk Job because it's free. Um, I guess definitely pick it up if you have a Steam Deck. I don't, and I really don't have any plans to right now. But um, it's it's meant to show off the Steam Deck's capabilities by having you use different control schemes to mm -hmm. do the thing and whatnot. Um, if you're playing it on a desktop as I did, you'll just have to use a regular whatever normal controller that you use. Um, they specifically tell you that you cannot play the game with a mouse and keyboard. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll tell I don't you. know. I like I like J.K. Simmons and we get more of him in this game. So I'll tell you what. <laughs> I also had no intention to buy a Steam Deck until I saw all the reviews and I'm like, maybe when the Gen 2 versions come out. <laughs> yeah that's sort of where i'm at like i have a gaming pc so I, I i have no need for a steam deck and i'm not in a situation where i like commute a lot or spend a lot of time traveling and if i do i'm more likely to just play my switch anyway um because i've got plenty of switch content to take on the go so i'm not super pressed about steam deck there's nothing that's really i think ever going to be exclusive to steam deck so um, I'm fine for right now. I'm glad that it came out and seems to be a cool new piece of technology. Like, it's super cool. Um, I think I would rather see Valve, like, learn what the number three is. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just me, maybe. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's time for the ad break. And uh, I switched it up on you. I don't know if you noticed that. Normally, we do the the shilling for the big corporation later. <laughs> uh, now, we're doing the shilling for the smaller corporation. Uh, go to densepixels.com slash fans. Uh, when you go to densepixels.com slash fans, you'll be invited to our Discord. And um, Discord is fun. Uh, you could talk about a lot of different things. Uh, you can talk about um, uh, any streams that you have. You can uh, you can promote them there. Um, you can talk about uh, anything video game related. You can talk about wrestling things. You can even talk about uh, each individual episodes. For example, if 
you were listening to this with your friends all together in a circle as you do. And you all as, were playing very as, normal as, everyday as we all, way as we all podcast. consume podcasts. <laughs> as we all we, that's, that's right. Um and and just having a good time. And if you uh made a bet with your friends on how quickly uh Micah would purchase Elden Ring. Oh my uh, god. If you said during Star? the show, congratulations, <laughs> a winner is you. Oh, I don't wow. know if you can see it. No, it's blurry, no, but that's okay. Can't. It's blurry. But there's my receipt. So we'll see. I'll I'll give you my account <laughs> next week. Um, Sir, you're a mess. Yeah. I I I I have a bad case of FOMO. I have a I have a I have a like a, a case of FOMO that I need to be like put in a hospital. And this and this is the problem because Mike has been like absorbing the like like the praise from the games media over the course of the past week. Right. But he's right. like but he's like but I'm good cuz I cuz I can hold off and then I had to come along and be like and then this game's had to come on. <laughs> like it's one thing when like some faceless like reviewer you know what I mean? Someone who wrote a review and then had someone else write it, like that, like, like that's you know six degrees of separation. Who's who's really playing it, right? <laughs> but I know Brad. Like I've spent personal time with Brad. Like I and for Brad to just be like, I really like this game. I'm like all right, man. Like we we kind of have a similar we kind of have a similar taste in in things. Um, so this yeah, is this I'll, is the I'll day. That Micah and Brad become from soft junkies. Like, like this, this is this is the from soft pod now. Like, like after we're done with this, like it's right in the bloodboard. Let's fucking go. I, I still, I still haven't really played any of those games. And uh, look, Eld, Elden Ring ha- is like it's, it's on my periphery. Like, I'm interested. I'll probably pick it up when once it's on sale. I also want to wait until they fix the performance issues it's experiencing on PC. Ah, yes. Um, Fair enough. Because, yeah, I've been hearing a lot about those, both from, like, my Twitter feed and from that guy. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, in uh, three minutes, I'll uh, I'll have Elden Ring. So, <laughs> a winner is you. Um <laughs> Go to youtube.com slash dense pixels and uh, subscribe. Uh, while you're there, you can see uh, Carrie's uh, Carrie, the, the person that Carrie was pointing back there, pointing mm-hmm. to back. There. You can see a blurry image of the receipt that I have as proof that a winner is you. <laughs> and, um, and you can, you can see, see Brad, Ryan Zimmerman. Uh, and you can see uh, Ryan Zimmerman. Uh, <laughs> someone the now, who I don't the now like. retired. Now Someone who I don't Zimmerman. like only because their last name is Zimmerman. Um, That's disrespectful. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you can see Brad's smug ass face uh, for for uh, for getting a junkie to uh, to 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 to, to take stay another on the hit. Thing he's addicted to exactly yeah. exactly. Look, you didn't um, have to buy Sifu. I try. I tried to warn you against buying Sifu, but apparently, I was too late. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I tried to when I tried to dive in front of you like a like a secret service agent protecting the president. <laughs> uh subscribe to all of our podcasts wherever you get your podcasts, including the Nerdpocalypse, Black on Black Cinema. We just did um the photograph, uh, which was a very interesting conversation about a movie that I don't think is as good as it could be. Uh coming distractions, uh Jay, uh lucky son of a gun. Just got to uh, watch the Batman and, and gave his thoughts, and I am hyped after listening to Jay's review. Just, just, just not not as a spoiler, but just as a you know general tenor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like I was going to see that movie, but I wasn't like super jazzed to see it. I'm kind of jazzed to see it now. Um, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast, which Brad is going to uh, uh, record right yeah. after this one. We have a um, literal fi- war to talk about. Yeah, yeah. You get and like the State of the Union, but also like... No, more importantly, a literal more war More importantly, a literal right war. <laughs> like, State of the Union tonight, and like, that'll probably yield some bullshit, but... Russia! Um, yeah. Go to densepixels.com slash premium for $5 a month, $50 for a year. You get access to the premium slate of podcasts, including... 
the airing of grievances, which uh, we just finished season eight. Apparently, Jay did not post the second to last episode that we did about a month and a half ago. Uh, so he posted that and the last episode of season uh, seven, season seven, uh, which is the invitations, um, which is a hilarious episode. And uh, we have some wedding stories that we talk about uh, in that episode. Uh, I really, really enjoyed recording it. No Time to Bleed, The Men with the Golden Tongues. I swear, guys, it's coming back. I swear it is. Um, upstage conversation uh, and the full that episode of the Look Forward <laughs> <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the full episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast, which ranges anywhere from ninety to uh, one hundred and twenty yeah, minutes. Probably, probably more towards the latter this week, if I if yeah. I have to guess. Yeah. Yeah, I just need to trick one of you ding dongs into watching another musical for me. <laughs> well, so. I'll be too busy playing Elden Ring now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you don't want to be a, a a weak bitch like Micah and purchase Elden Ring during the podcast, which I don't necessarily think you you know you don't want to be that guy. I think it's perfectly fine to be that guy. Um, <laughs> There's some new free games you can get on your uh, console of choice. Uh, on PlayStation, you can get uh, Ghost Runner if you have a PS5, which is a action platform, kind of like a runner, like Mirror's Edge, basically, um, but with a cyberpunk theme. Apparently, it's very good. I'm going to download this and play it at some point. Um, and then if you have a PS4 or a PS5, you can get Ark Survival Involved, uh, a game so good that Vin Diesel had to lend his likeness to the sequel, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Uh, and Team Sonic Racing, which I've heard is a good kart racing game. It's a perfectly fun kart racer. Yeah. yeah. And by default, probably the best Sonic game that exists on the planet, if I had to guess, just wow. based on the fact that it's a perfectly good game. Uh, and then also... Sonic Media exists. Yeah, and it's still Sonic platforming. Yeah, wow, indeed. And then also, uh, if you have PlayStation, uh, you can download for free... Uh, Ghost of Tsushima Legends, which is the very good and not talked about as much as it should be multiplayer mode uh, for mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, which has both cooperative, uh, like, narrative content and, like, horde modes, basically, which are both really fun. So if you haven't played Ghost of Tsushima, great place or a great way to check that game out for free, uh, which I highly recommend because it is very, very good. Uh my favorite open world game of all time currently. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, Xbox is getting some free stuff as well. I got to be honest with you. I'm I'm this close. I'm this close to not talking about the Xbox free games with gold because as as we've yeah. determined, <laughs> they don't garbage. care anymore. They do not care. <laughs> they don't care They're anymore. They're just like here's some garbage. Fuck They're me. just like buy Game Pass where you can play Guardians of the Galaxy for free this month. <laughs> so like that's that's oh, basically shit. yeah that's basically that's basically God, where their heads are. I waited to buy that game. I'm actually like I bought it for PS5 when it was on sale a couple months ago and finally took it out of the shrink wrap. Um, and I think I'm gonna start playing that this weekend. Yeah. Should it just? I still need to get Game Pass for PC. Yeah. Uh, well, if you if you don't have Game Pass but you still have Gold for some reason, uh, without Game Pass, you can get the Flame and the Flood, which I've heard good things about, uh, yeah. for Xbox One and uh, and Xbox Series systems, uh, and Street Power Soccer, which I know nothing about. Uh, that game is free as well. And then the free games uh, from 360 are Sacred Two, uh, Fallen Angel, which again I've heard some good things about, and then uh, SpongeBob, SpongeBob Truth or Square, which is a game. Okay. Sure. So, uh, we have now reached, I think, the end of release apocalypse as well with this last week that we have here. Uh, Elex right. Two comes out on PlayStation, Xbox, PC. Uh, Far Changing Tides comes to PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Switch. Uh, Puzzle Quest Three comes to PC and mobile. I actually downloaded this. I'm gonna check out Puzzle Quest Three at some point as a as a bit of a time waster. Uh, it's a match three RPG, basically. Uh, Shadow Warrior 3 uh, comes to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. And apparently this game is free on day one on PlayStation Now. PlayStation bringing, bringing the big guns to the fight. Shadow Warrior 3 going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Game Pass, apparently. So you can check that out if you're a PlayStation Now subscriber. <laughs> uh, Babylon's Fall, which I believe there's a time demo currently available for, but by the time you're listening to this, the game will probably be out. 
uh, comes to PlayStation and PC. This is the new Platinum Games game that's coming out. Uh, Gran Turismo 7, which uh, you guys know I cannot wait for, uh, coming to PlayStation <laughs> this Friday. How I'm going to balance time between this and Elden Ring, I have no fucking idea, but we're going to make it work, damn it. And then uh, Triangle Strategy is coming to the Nintendo Switch on Friday as well. So that's what you have to look forward to uh, in terms of new releases this week. Um, Gotta say, time for this week in NFTs. And once again... <laughs> I hate that this is like a segment now. <laughs> once again, I am delighted to talk about it because once again, the only NFT news that we have to talk about in the gaming industry is someone shitting on them, which is the yeah. best type of NFT news. <laughs> uh, in this case, uh, Valve uh, head Gabe Newell uh, has said that uh, the reason that they banned NFTs, well, I'll, I'll let him quote for you because he talked to Eurogamer and he said, quote, the things that were being done were super sketchy and there was some illegal shit that was going on behind the scenes. And you're just like, yeah, this is bad. Blockchains is a technology or great technology that in the ways which have been utilized are currently pretty sketchy and you sort of want to stay away from that. And according to Gabe Newell, about 50% of the transactions that Steam, uh, Steam partook in when using crypto was legal, uh, were fraudulent, which right. to the surprise of absolutely <laughs> nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, so he said, uh, so customers are like, how come I just paid 498 us dollars for this product? And the, and if the answer is, you know, that's what happens when you have a highly volatile currency, uh, today you paid 99 cents for it. Tomorrow you're going to pay $498. Pe that that makes people super cranky. So it just wasn't a good method. So we banned it. <laughs> yeah, it was some with some fucking sense out here regarding crypto. Yeah. Um, the people who are currently active in that space are usually not good actors. That's I mean, at it. this point, I don't. At this point, I don't really feel like unless you are like elderly or like not technologically inclined like if you if you if you jump on this like nft crypto bandwagon like i'm not i don't necessarily you're feel a sorry fucking you. walnut i don't yeah i don't necessarily That's... feel sorry for you at this point point. and i shame to each and every celebrity advertising this shit shame to all of them um i bet you they're not getting paid in nfts they're not getting paid in crypto <laughs> <laughs> for that fucking endorsement. Yeah, that, inclu so, that, that includes you, Larry David. What the fuck are you out that, here? Yeah, Larry, like that. What the fuck? Here. That includes you, LeBron James. What the fuck? Like, Matt Damon. All of you. Like, get the hell out of here, man. Um, Yeah, good. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that some, like you said, somebody has some goddamn common sense. So, uh, Carrie, I'm sure uh, mm -hmm. that you are very excited uh, by the news that came from uh, VentureBeat's Jeff Grubb, who says that there are very early talks between Obsidian and Microsoft to make Fallout New Vegas Part 2. Look, there's a reason why I titled this in our docket, uh, Finally Some Good Fucking Food. And uh, yeah, dude, if, if the next fallout entry is either a new vegas remake or a new vegas 2 co-developed with obsidian as it should be uh yeah fuck me up with that i'm there day one um new vegas remains in my humble individual opinion um the best fallout content that they've ever put out um so yeah uh apparently uh jeff grubb uh says uh, a lot of people at Microsoft think that this could work and there's a lot of interest to make it happen. Like, yeah, people have been asking for this for literally the last decade. I'm surprised it never happened. Um, it's like the one, it's like the one Fallout game of the modern Fallouts that I've never heard a, 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 you know, crass word said about. Like it seems, it seems like universally <laughs> beloved by everybody. It's janky in the way that like all Bethesda published titles are janky, um, especially in like the Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas era of the Obsidian era, you know, um, not the Obsidian, the Oblivion era. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, 
and it's just like the game's written really well it has so much personality it's very fun to play and the fact that at any point in time you can turn around a corner and be completely obliterated by a giant mutant mosquito um keeps you on your toes <laughs> in a way that <laughs> you know um I don't know, like New Vegas is the Fallout game that I like. I keep going back to over and over and over again Um, because it's just like it's a it's a fun, wild place to be. The everything's just good and fun and in in ways that, you know, I liked Fallout 4 a lot. Fallout 4 had some really great companion characters. But for me, it fell short just because like, why would you want to be in fucking boston when you could be in las vegas <laughs> like, <laughs> the, like the it's it also plays into like the history of the the new california republic and all that um i don't know it's it's good it's a good game and um i would i would be here for both like a total remaster of the original or you know a, a sequel just following up on the events of that game and and what happens after the battle at hoover dam and shit like that so uh tgs coming back in person in 2022 they said they're still going to have some online components um so that people could enjoy it from home as well um i get why this is happening it still feels kind of antiquated to me um to be doing conventions anymore but i guess covid numbers are going down sufficiently enough but i would also wouldn't be surprised if this uh, changed suddenly if somehow things, you know, go sideways before we get there in September. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Japan, they, they not like, they didn't want to do the Olympics. guys. <laughs> like, they're like, nah, yo, like, yeah, <laughs> we don't want this. Yeah. We don't want any of this. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think the convention is, um, is kind of, uh, is very outdated in terms of disseminating information. But, you know, sure. you, you, you go to conventions for the other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you, you don't go just to get news. You can get news anywhere. You go for, you know, the sights, the smells, the... the Hands-on hands demos and yeah. networking and stuff like that. Like, I, I understand why um, there's the desire to move back to... Um, at least having it partially in person so especially now because like everyone's kind of been isolated so like people are looking for a reason to just kind of like feel normal again um but you know after a few years i'll be back to like well what's the point of all this mm -hmm. so i don't know uh, more from Jeff Grubb, who said uh, that he is hearing that Sony's Project Spartacus, which is uh, rumored to be their Game Pass competitor, uh, kind of emerging and revamping of the PlayStation Now service, um, is uh, we might see something on that as soon as this spring. Um, and he also had some details about potentially what the tiers would look like. Uh, according to him, there's going to be three tiers, $10 a month, uh, which will basically be what PlayStation Plus is now, uh, which... Seems a little hinky considering that you can pay for $60 for a year of PlayStation Plus, uh, which is $5 yeah. a month. So <laughs> I, I hope they don't decide to just get rid of that uh, in the wake of this. That's not going to rub a whole lot of people the right way, if that's the case. Um, a second tier for $13, which basically gives you access as well to what PlayStation Now is now, essentially. Like, you get access to the PlayStation Now catalog of PS4 and PS5 games. Uh, and then the premium tier, which is rumored to be $16 a month, uh, will come with access to, quote, classic games. Uh, no real word on what that means specifically yet. Uh, cloud streaming uh, and also free game trials uh, for new games. Hmm. So not quite going the route of, you know, first party day one, but a free game trial... Uh, being able to play the game for, you know, let's say, I don't I don't know how long, but let's just assume it's anywhere between five and ten hours for free, um, is not obviously as good as Microsoft service, but I feel like it's the best that you're probably going to get uh, from yeah. Sony for, for something like this. Cool. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it, worth noting, Bloomberg previously reported the premium tier would include access to PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. Yep. So. I, I would I would play some PSP stuff because I'm not about to fucking buy a PSP to play Persona 3 Portable. <laughs> I'm 
I'm not. But you'll I I get well. it. I I get I get what they're doing, but this would have to be more than just like back catalog stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it would have to be like it would it would have to equal Game Pass. It would have to equal like, hey, here here are games that are coming out produced by us that are gonna be here on day one. And um because I you know, I, I realize this is just me, but um I don't need to go back and play Mark of Cree. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, a ra- what a random game to pull out. Of that, uh, I remember. I remember people loved that game, man. Like they loved it, and um, yeah, I don't need to go back and play and, and play that. So, see the pro- the problem is we're warped by the type of games that uh, some weird folks liked uh, when we worked at GameStop, like the random PSD yeah. that people would that people would go <laughs> after for some reason. So, a lot of those games are worth some money these days, though. It's true. It's true. Uh, finally, bit of, finally, last bit of news. A couple lawsuits have been filed against Activision Blizzard uh, by two of its shareholders uh, for uh, basically trying to stop the acquisition uh, to Microsoft, which to me is fucking dumb. Uh, like, you're yeah. about to get paid, bro. This isn't like, an so Activision yeah. Blizzard's best interest. So the first one is by Kyle Watson in California. Of course, a fucking that Kyle would, would do uh, this. Well... <laughs> Yeah, uh, un- unfair for a number of reasons, he said, um, saying that uh, the preliminary proxy statement was materially deficient, did not give them appropriate data that would allow them to make an intelligent, informed and rational decision of, of whether to vote in favor of the proposed transaction. Somebody um, needs to get a Grammarly subscription and eliminate all those unnecessary fucking words. <laughs> Um, and then a second lawsuit, uh, Shiva Stein, uh, who, uh, it's a similar lawsuit to that of Watson's. However, worth noting, uh, as Polygon reported, said that Stein is one of the most prolific securities plaintiffs in the United States, and they filed 124 securities lawsuits between 2018 and 2020, with half of them being voluntarily dismissed. Um, <laughs> Here's, I, I just, I can't understand, like, the stock is tanking in the wake of allegations against, you know, against things that the CEO of the company has done. He's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. Someone swoops in and basically offers to buy your, buy your shares out at one and a half times what they're worth. How are you Uh not like, this is fucking great. Let's go. Let's make this shit happen. Let's, let's do it today. Let's, 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 let's fucking make this, let's make this shit go. Um, whatever. Everyone's going to, you know, there's always some knuckleheads. Because people work in securities are all fucking assholes. Yeah. They're dumb. Um, this probably isn't going to go anywhere. Like, I, I can't imagine that there's any. No, I, I imagine both of these will will be dismissed fairly yeah. quickly. Uh, the the bigger issues for Activision Blizzard remain the numerous other investigations that are going on into their <laughs> workplace conduct and treatment of their employees. So, uh, we have we are going to go to the Dense Pixels post office. Uh, we'll we start with some Pokemon questions first from Cam. Uh, who asked what starter were everyone's going to use? But we already kind of answered that up front. And by everyone, Weed cat. I mean Carrie. Um, Weed cat. He also asked, which do you think is going to have the best end or weirdest uh, final uh, evolution? Ooh, I think the duck. I think the duck's going to have a weird one. He's already got a hat on. A lot of people are predicting that this is given that this is based in in Spain that the the duck is going to take on the sort of humanoid silhouette and end up either looking like a conquistador or a matador um so we'll see i just, I, I just hope, I, I I just think, hope he doesn't i, du- I hope he doesn't grow into a humanoid it's, figure yeah the, the it's matador it's right there Ma- it's matador yeah there it is i think i think uh i think i think quaxley has uh has the the largest weird final evolution potential. I'm just hoping Weed Cat stays on all four paws. We've seen a lot of four-legged animals uh, end up standing upright in their second and third evolution, and I don't love that. I want to see I want to see my my Weed Cat turn into a big old blunt panther. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, I, I just hope the duck doesn't evolve into like a red tie wearing racist that's like 
trying to get you to build a wall between this region and and the and the France like region and Kalos. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, <laughs> so that would be. I I I think that's disrespectful to the little. little boy. <laughs> look, we don't we don't we don't know we don't know his uh we don't know his beliefs yet. The game's not out till <laughs> last until later this year, so we'll find out then. Uh, if he's if he's a racist or not, uh, no. Again, so so they the the little bits that they've released about the three the three starters, uh, Quaxley is described as earnest and tidy, and I don't think either of those words describe Donald Trump. Don't they? Uh, <laughs> don't they sell like milkshakes that you can give to like your your Pokemon in the game, or like protein shakes of some kind? There's like vitamins and whatnot that you can give them to boost their stats. Historically speaking, yeah. there's there's no like shake thing though there's not like a no you can't shake. give him a fucking mcdonald's burger okay or because because i'll say he could literally become the milkshake duck at, at you know certain <laughs> points of the game if you're not if you're not careful That's um true. daniel asks you carrie uh how many pokedexes have you fully completed which of course is the th the answer that we have to know to know if you are a capital r capital g Ooh. real gamer carrie wow completed okay pokedexes. i've completed I completed one. Uh, completing <laughs> completing the Pokedex uh, has never really been a priority for me because it requires a lot of trading and whatnot. Typically, when it comes to Pokemon, I catch the ones that I like to use on my team, and I don't worry too much about catching stuff outside of that. Um, except in Arceus, I'm trying to finish the Pokedex because that's like that's the end game is you finish the Pokedex. So I'm trying to you know beat the game, right? Um, Whereas like there's there's never really a huge reward for doing it in other games. It's like, oh, you finished the Pokedex. Here's a gold star sticker. There you go. Great job, kid. You did it. Um, I completed the Johto Pokedex in my copy of Pokemon Silver, and I was able to do that because at the time, uh, I was really into the card game. So three times a week, my parents would drop me off at Owings Mills Mall, and I would play Pokemon cards at the Wizards of the Coast store, but a lot of people also were playing the video game with each other too, and were wheeling and dealing and trading like actual Pokemon with each other for cards and whatnot too. Um, so I managed to complete the Johto Pokedex. I guess I was 11 years old at the time. And uh, sadly, <laughs> the battery in that game that maintains like the time in the game and the day night system um when that gives out your save data is just gone so um my one completed pokedex uh evaporated into the ether many years ago and i haven't completed another one since but i know i did it so it's good enough for me <laughs> Uh, Trey asks, when do you think Sony will drop Spider-Man 2 news? Uh, he replayed the previous two games again. Um, I think it's going to be E3. I think it's going to be the focus of their E3 presentation. Hmm. I don't know what else they have coming this out. Year? Yeah. Um, I don't I know. I'm assuming that game... Uh, yeah, I disagree. I think that game uh, will probably come out. It's coming out in 2023. I'm, pro I'm guessing it's probably going to come out in September since that's when the first mm. one came out. Um, I do I think, think we're going to get new very news. earliest at the very earliest sometime around the holidays. Yo, hmm. I, I forget what big, I forget what, like, if there are any like conventions or, or big news, or they might just drop like a state of play or something yeah. like that at the very yeah. earliest of holidays. But I don't see, I don't see anything substantial until early 2023. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Ragnarok is going to be their big focus for during the. That's time this you know year, what so. you're right. I forgot yeah. about that. That that was a game because it's like they put out God of War on PC. So in my mind, we already got a new God of War this year. <laughs> but Ragnarok's <laughs> coming out. Uh, Film Wander asks, "Am I a baby back bitch because I'm not touching Elden Ring?" Um, no, no, no. I, I'm gonna say no, and and I don't I don't like the attitude that some people have about from software games, where it's like, oh, if you don't want to play it, it's because because you're not a good enough gamer. It's like, man, not every game is for every person, and that's yeah. fine. If you're not interested in Elden Ring, that's fine. You know, there are plenty of critically acclaimed games that I haven't played because I'm just I'm you know I'm not interested. It doesn't make me less of a hardcore gamer. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are many, <laughs> there are many games in the Soul series. Like, there are bosses in those games, like early game bosses that are infamous for like the boss that got people to bounce off the game. Essentially, like people that that didn't have like the 
the that that didn't want to stick with it to try to learn how to beat it um kind of thing and i can definitely see points in this game where that could easily be the case like there was you know a couple optional bosses that i ran up against in the overworld that you know smacked my face in a little bit because i just wasn't equipped to face them and uh again the fact that in this game that you have so many other things to bounce off to um, if you run up against a really tough challenge, I think it's to his benefit. So I think it's, you know, th th it's been thrown around by a lot of the folks that review games that um, this is the most accessible from software game. And to, th to that extent, I agree just because you're not tunneled down a very specific path that you must pass this insurmountable obstacle or you will progress no further. I'm sure that there is a point in the game where that does happen or several points in the game where that does happen. But I feel like that you could do more to prepare yourself. Um before you get to those areas in this one. But if you don't want to play it, if you're not interested in it, uh, I, I don't blame you. I don't think, like, if you have no interest in From games, I don't necessarily know that this is going to be the one to get you there. I've always been tangentially interested in From Software games. I've just always been afraid of them. But now I'm less <laughs> afraid of them. Uh, because I'm playing a lot of, like, fucking hard-ass roguelikes and having a fine time with those, so... Um, so I was not worried about this one. Uh, Ejac asks, good recommendations for rechargeable batteries for Xbox controllers. Let's see what, what I Um, have. I don't know because I'm still using the one from the, from my Xbox one, since all of the accessories just kind of work with all of the Xboxes. Uh, so I'm still using, I'm still using that one. Um, I, I would say... Yeah, mine's like, just the Microsoft one, I think. I, I, I will say, personally, I've had bad luck over the years with Microsoft-branded power accessories. Um, I would recommend going to get, like, some rechargeable Energizer lithium batteries that come with, like, mm. the charger and just kind of rolling with those. Because if you get four, you know, you can keep, keep two charged and, you know, when your two die, just swap them out that's, and charge the other ones true. and kind of go from there, so... Uh, and then Leonardo uh, asks a fantastic question uh, to end the week that Micah will have to abstain from. Uh, what's the dumbest thing that you've ever done while inebriated? He spent a few minutes trying to call a cat the other day, and it was a mural. He says edibles <laughs> are fun. <laughs> I can't remember um, any any especially dumb things I've done while inebriated. It's kind of the whole, kind of one of the benefits of being an e read is that you don't, <laughs> so you don't, you don't remember, remember some of the shit. worst, uh, <laughs> some of the worst moments. Yeah. Uh, the only time I get inebriated is when I'm sick and need to drink NyQuil. So go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of the dumbest thing I've ever done. Last week I got drunk and flew the Millennium Falcon at Disney World. <laughs> I like we we knocked back a couple of cocktails and then went right on the Millennium Falcon ride and they were like, "Cool, you guys are going to be pilots." And I was like, "Okay. <laughs> Here we go." <laughs> and um to uh predictably mediocre results on that smuggling mission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think for me like I've always paid for it the next morning like that. Like I've never done anything truly mm. stupid when I've been drunk, but I've had some gnarly fucking hangovers the following morning, uh, which, you know, makes it so that I don't get that wasted again uh, for a very, very long time. Um, Cause yeah, hugging hug the toilet in a Denny's on New Year's day is not necessarily where you want to <laughs> Yo, be, that sounds <laughs> where like you be spending your time um, in general. <laughs> So that stay, stay, uh, stay away from that kids is, is what I'll, is the advice that I'll give you guys out there. Um, so th you guys can of course submit your questions to the dense pixels <laughs> post office by joining our discord at densepixels.com slash fans. Uh, while you are on the internet, go to youtube.com slash dense pixels, subscribe to the show on YouTube, like the videos, uh, ring the bell icon. If you want to be notified when new videos get posted, Make sure you go to twitch.tv slash densepixels. Subscribe to the main channel there. You can also subscribe to our personal accounts. I am Dense Pixels Brad, Terrence is Apparition 410, Carrie is up, it's Carrie. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the show if you have not yet. And all the other great TNP shows uh, on whatever podcatcher you use where you can download only the finest fine podcasts. Not Spotify, please. I mean, we're on Spotify, but don't use Spotify. Yeah. So... <laughs>
So there's that. Uh, that's it. Uh, look forward to next week when Micah uh, will tell us whether he is a From Software <laughs> junkie. Uh, thanks to Elden Ring. Uh, you'll get to be regaled of tales of speedy race cars uh, that I'll get to talk about as well. Uh, and and I'm going to play fun. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Carrie's going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. See, it's, a, it's already a can't-miss show next Absolutely. Week. You're I've got gonna... another can't-miss show for you. Oh, Get look at the segue. The, the Baltimore. Yeah, I got it. Nailed it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, my band Quick Save is playing at North Avenue Market in Baltimore next Friday, March 11th. Um, we North are Ave? supporting... Huh? North Avenue? North Avenue Market. Yeah, it's over by Micah. Uh, like, the school, not the person. And... Uh, Man, yeah, I have it, it must have really changed North Avenue. I, I mean, parts I, of North I, Avenue are still North Avenue, but this is, uh, it's an arcade bar. They feature live music, so we're going to be playing, lay, laying down some, some good video game jams while supporting the uh, video game music Bingo Night to benefit the Baltimore Gamer Symphony Orchestra. So it's a $10 cover charge, it's all ages, and uh, you can flex your VGM knowledge, go home with some good prizes, and... Uh, See me play down some fat bass lines. So that's it. It would be a great time. We'll All see boys. you guys the next time. See ya. See ya. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.